I think uh, introducing the virtual ensemble was one way of trying to keep students engaged, but virtual band was a way of us connecting uh, in a more relaxed atmosphere uh, to just just play and not worry about um, not worry about math, not worry about perfection, not worry about uh, what was going on at home, not worry about the pandemic. It was just a way for us to connect. And I, it was more about the relationship building and the community building than anything else. Uh, our music council at Bethune is incredible. And they were so helpful this year because they put on quite a few events uh, and they had a few initiatives this year that they ran uh, to help build the community and help foster the connections between the students at Bethune and keep music alive. They ran some game nights. Uh, we ran an, a grade nine uh, welcome session. Uh, we hosted a, uh, a feeder school welcome to music um, uh, session as well, where they did some leadership, uh, some team building games. Um, they, my music council also run a mentorship program with senior students paired with uh, junior students, which is very helpful, uh, especially when the, the junior students, the new students are feeling a little bit more maybe apprehensive about high school if, and we paired them with a uh, paired them with a, a senior student and it uh, really helped um, make some connections and make them feel like they're a little bit more at home. Um, in the community, we also tried to get our um, our music heard in the community. Uh, I would submit recordings to the weekly e-newsletter that our principal sent out. I would give updates of what the students were doing in music class. I uh, put on a casual indoor performance at the school in quadmester number one when we could still be in person. Uh, we put on a percussion ensemble uh, concert in our main um, kind of the main hallway of the school and whoever was passing through got a chance to hear that performance. Uh, we did bucket drumming outside so our community could see and hear that we're still making music and I think it's just it was very important to me to keep uh, keep us visible and keep us kind of on the on the front of everybody's mind that oh they're still making music even though it's a pandemic we didn't stop we didn't stop we kept going well I personally don't know if I have any overly successful strategies um, because on a daily basis I don't feel like I was very successful uh, but I would I would say my biggest strategy is just to to learn to go with the flow and to adapt as you need to and to ask for help I made sure that the lines of communication with myself and my student were always kept open and that we, I was empathetic towards their individual needs. Not everyone's at home learning environment was created equal. So we had to be creative around that. So that was a strategy uh, that relates back to being adaptable. I'm still trying to figure out the engagement piece myself. Um, I had mentioned that I've struggled, I'm struggling with finding the joy in teaching music this past year as we flip-flopped uh, back and forth from in-person to online. And it seemed like just as soon as we were able to play our instruments again, it got taken away from us. So I need to get that back before I feel like I can fully engage the students. And I think to do that, I need to better educate myself on how technology can really be a useful and fun uh, rather than a daunting uh, portion of teaching in my classroom. So I think that once I can get more comfortable with that and uh, I can be able to be a better role model for the students to show them what engagement can look like when we are faced with maybe music, making music at home alone. Okay, yes, it was definitely uh, difficult to, to keep the students engaged, but probably more, I probably felt this more on my end. You know, I, I think as teachers and as musicians, I think we're usually harder on ourselves, you know, <laughs> than, and other students are like, no, it was fine. And you're like, oh, really? I felt like that didn't go well, you know? And so I think, I think sticking, sticking with your plan, you know, and, and not always trusting your initial feelings, you know, I think it's, it's important to, uh, to, to remember that, even though it, sometimes it feels uncomfortable. So I had to really push myself to, no, we're going to do this and it's going to be fun. You know, and sometimes as a teacher, you have to convince yourself. Uh, and I think the more you buy into it, uh, the students will as well. So um, staying motivated, um, you know, I, I tried to keep a lot of fun and humor involved. That's, uh, you know, to me, like I said, a big part of music is community. And um, isn't it so much fun just to laugh? <laughs> 
<laughs> with a lot of people and make some great music. I think that's that's a great part of learning is is being able to laugh um, and sometimes laugh at yourself and you know and and know that everybody is where they're at and that's okay, right? I think we need to embrace that that. There's no way that we can say every student in grade 10 will be like this and every student will be that is that is just not going to happen. We're, we're all coming from different skill sets, different levels of experience, um, but we need to come together. Uh, and we need to celebrate that and celebrate all the improvements that we're making individually that eventually will help collectively. Right. So I think, you know, yeah, just keeping it fun, keeping it engaging, uh, you know, having a variety of, of, of different pieces and things and, and, and activities. Um, you know, like I, I alluded to earlier, um, doing some more creative pro projects, you know, and um, sometimes at the beginnings of calls, uh, if we were fully virtual, you know, uh, you know, in class, you can always say some things and connect with people and look at them. So I was always thinking, how can I do that in a virtual way? Especially if there's always some kids who will, they won't maybe won't turn their camera on and right. So you you want them, you want everybody to kind of buy in and feel like there's still that community happening and they're still learning. And um, so sometimes it would just be a silly question and I'd say, hey, this is just for attendance, so I can see your name in the chat, right? <laughs> um, so asking about their day or asking, you know, putting a silly meme on and um, getting them to react to that or what's your favorite meal or what's your favorite song, you know and or sometimes it would be a bit more serious and we get to share some some things with each other. Um, but uh, yeah, I, and a big thing is just having some sort of goal for these kids and, and um, showcasing them, praising them, um, making sure they know I see that they're working and then that they're improving and, and, and talking about that so other students see it too. You know, I've always felt that I don't know, sometimes you can see in, 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 in some groups, you know, there's a negativity and there's a negative competition that doesn't sit well with me. I, I think we learn better when it's more of a positive competition and, and we're lifting each other up uh, instead of saying, oh, well, they didn't practice and they need to do this. Well, maybe there was a reason and hey, let's in, you know, and so I think, um, yeah, just listening, um, giving the students um, options, right? Um, and uh, have, making sure, I, you know, they have a voice, you know, I, I think it's a big thing too. Um, but yeah, definitely, uh, I love those practice videos. I'm really gonna keep those. <laughs> In the past, we used to do, you know, written journals, you know, set your goals and strategies. And sometimes I would say, how much did you practice? I wouldn't, I wouldn't, you know, kind of give them a mark based on the minutes. It's gonna be different for everybody, but the video gives a really great snapshot and, and really gets them on their instrument and there's proof of it. <laughs> and, uh, and then we can reflect after and say, hey, look how well you did. Look, this first video you were here and now video number eight, look at how well you've done. And so they see it too, because music is a slow process, right? Learning to master an instrument, it's not instantaneous and um, kids can get discouraged. So I think it's really nice to have that. Um, you know, kind of as an evidence piece too. It's been extremely difficult to engage the students. I play every day. I play with them. I learn their study. I learn their scales, whatever, um, because I think they need that reinforcement. And what I've noticed actually is with the, the, the grade nines is that they actually individually, I think they sound better than a normal year where I'm not playing as much and they only have the other clarinet player to match their sound off of. But like I, I think play it. I, you know, I think I sound pretty good, right? So I can, I, I model good sound and I'm noticing anyway that they're playing, well, they sound better. I don't know if they're playing better, but they sound better. Their concept of tone and intonation and all that is a bit better uh, than in, pre in previous years. So I might play more next year. I might demonstrate things more next year instead of just singing it or playing on a keyboard or, or whatever, play it on the clarinet and they can hear a good clarinet player. Or if I was a good trumpet player, I played on the trumpet. I'm a terrible trumpet player. So that is definitely not going to happen. Um, I hope that next year is more normal than, than anything. I hope that there is no online component next year um, because kids are done. Teachers are done. It's just so exhausting to do it 
every day and try to just keep being, you can't even really be educational. You have to be entertaining. Like you just have to be, I've heard this term before and I don't like this term, but the edutainer, I, I hate that, but that's what it is this year. Are kids learning? I don't know, maybe. Will they learn when we're face to face? A hundred percent they will. Do they learn online? I've taken courses online. I never, I never did well on them. They're hard. Um, and it's just, it's so hard this year to know what has worked and what hasn't. So strategies to keep kids engaged. I make fun of myself. I, I joke. I'm, I'm a fool. Like if, if, if you had to describe me as, you know, like the class clown or the jock or the whatever, I'm definitely not the jock, but I, I, I am, I'm the class clown. Like I just, I like to have fun. Um, I, I, the chat in our Google meets is always open. So unless they're like abusing it and then they can make a joke, I'll make fun of them. They make fun of me. It, it's just this tricky balance of, okay, let's get to work, but also let's have some fun because they don't have to take music. They have to take an arts. And after grade nine, they definitely don't have to take music. So you, you just have to do something that's going to keep them entertained. I got an email from a grade nine student today. Can't, she can't wait for music next year because I made her laugh every class. So there's got to be something to that. And everyone wants to laugh. Everyone wants to have a good time. And if you can do it, great. And even if it's one little tiny joke and you really have to find the place for that little joke, that's fine. You just have to kind of keep kids happy. And, uh, you know, it's sad to say that that's what education is right now. Elective education is that right now but it's the truth, I think. And I just, we just had fun. And will I continue to try and have fun and be the class clown? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Absolutely.